Hello everybody, Lana Lamb here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am finally back in my new studio in our new home and I'm excited to be sitting down and painting my first design for you guys. I painted a few designs already for uh, submissions and other programs that I'm working on. But this one is just for you guys, a Christmas themed one. I'm excited about it. I've already done the base coating for the background and the base coating for the initial uh, first coats. And I will tell you exactly how I did that. I did that because it's just basic color book painting. You know, you're just blocking in color in the shapes that it needs to be in. Um, and that takes up a lot of time. It's very, very easy. You grab the brush that fits the area that you're painting and paint it in with two coats of the color that you need to put on it. So uh, I will take you through that uh, color palette step by step on my base coats and then we're going to get started. everyone I've got my base coats on this piece now this is a 6x12 canvas panel you can certainly paint this on anything that you want I'm also painting it on a much smaller piece that only has part of these ornaments here so let me tell you what I have done my base coats with the background is deep midnight blue two coats then I spattered some thinned white on there took a baby wipe and diffused it you do not have to do the spattering up to you. You can do the bokeh effect in the background. You can do lots of things with the background. I would keep it a dark color, a dark blue or a black. Um, or even a dark gray would be fine. Okay, so for the, the ribbon, we did three coats of snow white. Um, if your white is very thin and not covering that dark color, go ahead and do a fourth. Let it dry completely before you transfer on your lines. Now when you transfer them on, for your stripes on your ribbon. Use gray graphite. If the lines are transferring super dark, be sure to erase them back to you can barely see them before you start painting. You can also make your own graphite paper by taking a piece of tracing paper and uh, scrubbing a pencil on it. I just use a standard pencil and then I kind of buff it in to this and I uh, use it as my graphite paper. Um, then it will give me very, very light lines. Um, so keep that tip in mind. Um, for the circles, if you do not have a circle stencil or a circle template, I highly recommend you get one. This one came from Hobby Lobby many years ago. I think theirs are green now. Um, but this is a three and a half inch stencil. I uh, circle. I do sell a circle stencil on my website. So if you want to reduce it. Um, my largest size is a two inch, but it has a varying sizes on it. So you can certainly uh, pick that up on my website, lonalam.com. But this came from Michaels and um, I just laid it on here on top of my line drawing and traced it that way. You can also use these as a stencil. They're technically a template for graphic artists but you can certainly use it as a template, uh, as a stencil. Just be sure and tape off around it so you don't get into any of your other circles or on the outer edge. And then I recommend that you paint it in with a sponge of some kind, an uh, artist sponge or a makeup sponge. It'll go much faster, thinner layers that way. Um, stencil brush, you can use a stencil brush, a large one, it will take a little bit. Um, but I, I just prefer doing it with a sponge, but that is an option up to you whatever tool you would like to use. All right, let's go over the colors that we painted our ornaments. This is two coats of moon yellow. This is one coat of gray sky, then two coats of primary red. The stripes on here are also primary red, so you can see the difference in the color, how what is behind your red will determine what your red comes out to be. I like gray sky when I want that true color of red. As a former mural artist, that is the color that I found that gave me the true color that was in that bottle or in that can. If I used something else, like a white, it lightens it, gives it a little pink tone. Greens and oranges, a lot of people use those, but it just kept changing the color of the red. I wanted the red to be the color that I picked. <laughs> so. 
Gray Sky is what I use under my reds all the time, um, but you can certainly use whatever color you want, but it will require something underneath it. Uh, gray Sky, orange, green, whatever you want to put under your red, it will require something. Uh, two coats of turquoise blue and two coats of uh, Hauser medium green, no, Hauser light green, sorry, and then gray sky, two coats of gray sky. So we've got all of our ornaments here. You can certainly make your ornaments whatever color you want. If your household is all reds and golds, then make them all reds and golds. If it's all reds and silver or greens and silvers or greens and reds, whatever. You do not have to use these colors. I'm using these colors so I can show you all the colors that typically are used at Christmas so you can see how to paint each color. But certainly make those bells any color that you want. I'm pretty sure I kept calling them ornaments, but they are bells. Okay, bells, bells, bells. All right, after everything is dry, I um, transferred on with gray graphite. Uh, my holes for my bells. When I transfer on for my stripes, make sure your white is completely dry. Use gray graphite. It is, if it, okay, if it is too dark, erase it back to where you can just see it. Nobody else needs to see it, just you. Um, erase it back. You can make your own graphite paper by taking a piece of tracing paper, using a, a I just use a number two pencil and scrub it on the graphite or the tracing paper and then I buff it a little bit with a Kleenex and then I use it as my gray transfer. It makes very light lines so um, and I like using that when I am going on a white area where I know I'm going to put a color like red does not cover up well. Um, if it's a dark color behind it. So if you've got dark lines for your red, if you don't erase them back, they'll be set in there and you'll just have to be happy with it however it is. So this is our beginning stages of my Jingle Bells design. So we are going to get ready to start painting on this. Um, I think we'll do all of the bells first. They're not ornaments. I know I called them ornaments earlier. Um, we're going to do all of the bells and then we'll do the ribbon at the end so we can add all of the fine details onto the ribbon that I want to add to it. So this is going to be fun. Now in the end you can bling it up by using some metallic paints on your silver and gold. I may do that. I don't know. Use some glitter paint on your ribbon. I am thinking highly of doing that. So those options will be up to you. But uh, we're going to start working on the gold bell first. So we're going to want to have antique gold and burnt umber and white to be using for this. So you can put those colors on your palette. Antique gold, burnt umber, and white. Okay, I think before I start adding some shading on here, I'm going to quickly do a first coat inside my little um, bell holes. And I'm just going to paint them in with a coat of soft black. So uh, I'm just going to grab a larger round brush and um, paint those in. Just one coat real quick. We'll come back and add a second coat uh, after we get some of the shading and stuff done. So I'm using soft black. And I'll just paint all these in. paint just a little bit. And you know I just made little circles at the end of my lines. You can certainly do little comma strokes um, which is what I normally do when I'm painting in my bells. But these bells were so big um, I felt like you know they needed a little something bigger. Kind of curve these so that it's not quite a straight line coming in to that circle. So I'll make 
my line kind of curve into it. So it's not a complete straight line. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna quickly go off camera and do these other ones real quick. All right, I got those on real quickly. One quick coat. Now, at this point, you want to erase any graphite lines that are still showing. Just get them off there, out of your way, and we're going to start working on the gold ornament. Now, I've put all my colors out that I need for all of my ornaments. Um, so I'm going to start with my antique gold for my first shading on my gold ornament. And we'll be shading underneath the ribbon here because the ribbon goes over the ornament. Try and stay off of my red there. All right, now I'm generally shade always on the left side. Uh, but for this one, I think I'm going to shade on the right side and the bottoms and keep the left side for highlight. We'll see how that works out. That, this is kind of backwards for my brain, but uh, we'll go with it. So on the bottoms, this is why I didn't put two coats on those holes because I knew I was going to be painting over those areas. I just wanted them in for kind of placement and... We're going to shape this ornament with this shading ornament. It's a bell. <laughs> You're all going to be screaming at the camera. It's like, it is a bell, woman. Come on. It's jingle bells. Jingle bells. All right. Give it uh, a little form there. I'm going to bring this down just a scooch and give it a little form here. Okay, so we need to let that dry uh, before we move on to doing any other areas. So we'll move down to the red. Um, for my red, I'm going to use, um, what do I have? Antique maroon. You can use rookwood. You can use cranberry wine and add a little bit of black to it. Wh whatever um, color you like to use. Um, I just wanted to give this one a try. I don't think I've ever used it with red. Um, I hope it's a color that's still in the deco art line because I can't remember. <laughs> but um, I think this is a nice, um, rich, dark red here. So again, I'm keeping the shading. I need more moisture in my breast. This particular bottle of my paint is kind of dry. And I'm keeping it on the bottom and the left or the right side. Normally, like I said, normally I do shade on the left. So this might uh, throw me out of whack a little bit. Okay, I think I'll grab a mop brush and mop that just a tiny bit. Now mop and brush will smooth out your paint, but it will also remove, so be careful how you use your mop brush. If you got a lot of paint on there, just barely, barely dab at it. We'll come back and shade on the hanger parts. Only three of them have a little bit of hanger showing. Okay, on our turquoise one, I'm going to use that uh, color we used in the background, the deep midnight blue. And this one will have a lot of shading on it because we have to go around this ornament and around our ribbon. And then, you know, all of this side will be the shadow side. So. This particular one will get a lot of shading on it. So I'm going to go up this edge here first, kind of let that start drying. And this one might have to be done in a few stages so that we can allow layers to dry. I want to have a little bit of highlight down here on this edge. It'll probably be the only place that gets, gets some highlight. And maybe, oh, I don't know, a little bit on that top edge. Well, I don't know about that top edge. That's, um, I'm really holding my brush up. And um, I have a very small amount of paint on my brush. And kind of tilting my brush up. So that I can put that first little placement of color in there. Um, to kind of get started on that one. 
because that one's going to require a few few uh, layering stages there because we have to work in small areas. Okay, for my green, uh, I'm going to use Lush Green. This was a new decor color, uh, I think in 2022. I, I can't really remember. But it is a lovely green. I really like it a lot. So we're going to go around. Everything that is... Remember to keep water on your palette when your brush is feeling dry. Go, go grab some water and uh, work that into your water edge of your brush. And it will scoot over and blend with your paint. Rounding the shape. These are pretty pretty light colors here. I'm not uh, overloading my brush by any means. Um, I like to float in lighter layers so that I can come back and, you know, deepen the effect. And I don't want to get there all at once. Okay, I see on my red one I forgot to shade along this piece of ribbon right here. So I'll put that in real quick. Okay, all right, we've got to do another layer of shading on these bells. So we're just going to go right back with our same colors, antique gold, and this is going to smooth out our first layer. If it looks pretty choppy, like mine looks pretty choppy right here, um, this second layer is going to smooth out and make everything look much nicer. Keep that moisture in your brush. This is just a thin, thin layer of paint. More water. Remember, we'll come back in and add those in down there, so. I brought this second layer out farther so it's darker on the edges and then it kind of you know has a graduation of color out into this lighter area that we will brighten up okay so thinner layers helps you do that so much easier all right let's move on to our red and I need a lot of water here because my red is like super super thick now you can add a little black to this red and get it even darker. Uh, we will add a third shading on here and that's where I will deepen all of my colors. And you know our darkest shading goes in specific areas generally. That paint is so thick. Okay, you see how we're starting to get a little bit of form there now? Looking good. I'm going to mop this one because it feels like it's overloaded just a touch. Clean on a wet spot and then dry on a dry spot. You want to make sure you clean your mop brush before you go to your next um, color because uh, you'll just transfer that color. All right, looking good, looking good. I'm gonna skip the blue one for a minute because I wanna give that red one a chance to dry. And I'm gonna go back down to my green, my lush green here. And we're going to 
apply our second shading. This is going to smooth out a little bit. Get some more water in my brush here. Try and stay off my ornament there. Okay, I think I'll mop that one as well. Seems a little. Okay, I haven't done that area over there. And then this right here I need to remove if I can. over and work this area right here. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, we'll definitely be darkening. I forgot to do my gray one down here. <laughs> so let me go down and put my first layer on my gray one, then I'll go up and do my blue one. So my gray one is going to be a very sheer color of black. So that means I'm going to work it into my brush with some water. I don't want it going all the way over my bris across my bristles. I definitely want to keep that on that toe edge. Completely forgot about this ornament. Bit. Probably will come back with some soft black on that. That will make that look a little bit more like a silver ornament. Trying to shape that there. Oop. Add water in my brush. I'm mopping that so it kind of carried there. Alright. I'm going up to my blue one here. So far, we're just using the same colors that we used initially for our shading. This is how we do our decorative painting type stuff. Layers, washes, glazes. That's how we get lots of depth. I just wanted to remove some of the moisture out of my mop brush there. I, I did not need to remove the color because I'm still with the same color. So it's okay if it transfers a little bit. is going to be fairly dark. If you don't have a dry spot on your paper towel to dry, then I recommend that you um, get a separate paper towel out. A little bit of moisture here. I want some movement in my paint. I don't want it to leave all these hard lines on here. All right, go out here on this edge. Make sure that other layer that you put on is dry. Because if it's not, you'll just lift it. 
That blue is going to require a little bit more smoothing. Let's see if this is dry. It is, so I can go ahead and put my second coat on here. I'm going to take some soft black and mix a little bit of flat black in it just to darken up my soft black. Um, and then we'll go with this color. I think that will give us a nice, more silvery toned ornament here. looking good. I'm liking that. Okay, so that is our first color for our shading. And they're already getting nice form to them. But we have to do it twice so that the first, the first layer is always going to be choppy, even on this blue one, because the blue that I'm using on top of it is a little transparent. And I have such small areas. I think I will go down to a smaller brush and do this one one more time uh, with that blue and um, but the second layer kind of starts smoothing everything out giving it more form and uh, oh they're already looking amazing okay we got two shadings on each one i know the blue one looks rough but um i think when we add our highlighting and stuff on it will it will settle down in there we do need to darken our shading by adding a little bit of dark color into our base shading color. So for our antique gold one we are going to add in a little bit of burnt umber. And actually I think I may just do just straight burnt umber because I don't I don't want it to burnt umber is pretty transparent so um, we can use it on its own and get a nice sheer color on our gold up here. We still need to do our little um, hook things that come out. So we're going to go into our darkest areas and shade. So we want this to be transparent so that we can move that paint and not fill a big area. This is just a light kind of transparent color that we're putting on here just to give this a little bit more of a gold. It's going to help it look more gold. Okay, I also want to take this color and go around my, um, my little X things here. Actually, I think I want to highlight on those edges. I think on the bottom edge, I'll add a little bit of, of this color. But on the top edge, I think I will do a little highlighting. Just going to tap that with my finger. That will take it down and not make it quite so bold. I might put just a little bit in there. That's good. So that one's ready for its highlight. Okay. Uh, on the red one, my red is pretty dark already, so I'm going to add a tiny little bit of black in there just to darken it. And we'll put this in some of our uh, deep areas. Just dirtying up that, that red. So along there, along this edge just close to the edge we're not we're not spreading this out very far it's it's staying pretty close but we're using a sheer color so that it will just blend out nicely um, if you get anything too stark in here um, you're going to notice too much of a transition so it's just a slight darkening with your um, deepest shading I just use it in key areas. I don't put it every single place, okay? 
All right, let's go to our green. And again, we're going to add a little bit of, I think, I might try burnt umber with my green. So with our green, we're going to do our final shading in our dark areas with our lush green and a tiny bit of burnt umber. Love this mix right here. This green is probably now one of my absolute favorite colors. You know, I've always liked uh, leaf green because it has that touch of blue in it. But this green is just an amazing green. I just, I just love this lush green. Okay, so that was a little bit of burnt umber in there. I think I need to do a little bit more on this outer edge here because it is still showing light in the camera. So I don't have my dark color far enough out there. I'll dry that real quick so we don't have that light edge. We do want a reflective light, but I don't want it the whole, whole width of this. some of that burnt umber and lush green mix. All right, so for down here, I'm just gonna use soft black. I have been using soft black and black mixed together, but I'm just gonna use soft black this time. And keep it transparent so it doesn't take over your, your ornament, okay? that. Clean off my mop brush here. All right, so our blue. With our blue, I'm going to take that midnight blue, deep midnight blue, and add some soft black to it. Some moisture would be good. Both those paints are getting dry on my palette. Okay, that's going to just deepen this blue, and we're just going to go in a few areas. Not all of them. Just wherever you've got some dark, dark color. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> that's my red ornament. I don't want it on my red ornament, but it's there now. A little bit under here. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Okay, just in key places, okay? I know the blue one looks choppy. <laughs> Seriously, it looks really choppy, but it's because we had so many areas to go around. Um, so it kind of limited our areas. But it's mostly going to be a darker blue. We're going to have highlights here, up there, and a little bit here. Okay, so that's our second shading on there. Um, so now we want to highlight on them. Okay, let's start our highlighting. Um, on our yellow one, we're going to highlight with white. So I'm going to put some highlight here. I've got water in my brush, so this will soften down in here, so don't uh, worry about it being so bright when you start with. It will kind of fade in there. I'm going to go around these things here. I'm going to mop that edge right there. And Soften over here where I started. Okay, maybe just a little bit on this one, not too much. And then we're going to put a bright 
highlight in the center just by tapping, keeping the painted paint side always uh, at the center of the circle that we're making. And then the water edge helps us kind of soften it out and make it a little bit softer. So we can get some nice, uh, I think I will move that up just a little bit on there. So it's much easier to do that bullseye type of float if you have water in your brush. So keep that in mind. I do want to make a little bit of a reflective highlight over here, just on this very edge out here. Taking the water edge of my brush removing some of that, thinning it down, uh, just giving it a little reflection over there. It could, it could also be down here. I think actually it would look a little bit better if it was down here. So I'll take that water edge and try and pull that out a little bit. So, a little reflecting down there, and a little reflecting up there. It's all good. We're going to come out here and brighten that a little bit more. Okay, so I also want to use the white uh, on the silver ornament. So we're going to bring that into the ornament a little bit. And then this one will get one of those little circle highlights. They're called bullseye highlights, but um, you know, whatever you want to call them. I like to keep that water edge, keep keeping it nice and soft. Okay? Nice and soft. Okay, so that is the highlight on the yellow ones. Um, the highlight on the red one, actually, um, I've got this Neon's Fiery Red. I don't know if I want to use just this or if I want to use some white on it as well. But let's see how this fiery red looks. So this one's going to have a pretty bold highlight over here. We'll probably come back and maybe put white on top of this one. This is a neon paint. So um, it's really uh, a bright kind of paint. I'm going to just gently mop it. Remove a little bit of that. I got a little heavy handed there. And blend it out a little bit. Clean my brush over here. Alright, let's make one of those circle uh, float things. And we'll put this one over here. Could put it up a little bit closer to the top as well. And remove some of that in the center. Dry my brush off because if I don't, when I go back to this paint, I'll just start lifting that damp stuff that's in my brush. All right, got a little hard line over here, so I'm gonna take my brush and dampen that and soften it with a mop brush. Now I want to put a little bit of this on the edges. Here and here. Got a little bit of pop of highlight. Okay, we'll come back and do all of the uh, dark areas in that. I think this one will definitely need that white highlight on it. Um, so this is just our kind of first highlight. They'll all get a second one. But the second one on all of them probably will be just white. Okay. Okay, so that was on the red one. Uh, the blue one, I've got some shoreline. I'm not sure. I think that might be a little bit too bright of a blue. So I'm going to equally mix white with it. Just make it a little softer blue. This is, this is one that we're just going to put down here and 
pull it up just a little bit. A little bit of a hard line here. I don't really like that. Some up here. This is an equal mix of white and shoreline. Uh, you might be able to do just the turquoise and white and get close to a shoreline color and then just add more white to it uh, if you don't have this color. Put a little, little highlight through here. You could dry brush all of these highlights on if, you know, floating is not your favorite thing to do. Um, you could certainly dry brush these, so don't feel like you're, you know, stuck with just doing dry brushing, or floating. <laughs> okay, on our green one, we're going to use citron green. You could also use margarita. That would be a good color choice here. So what I'm doing here is I'm keeping the water edge out here so I can soften these two corner pieces and then just put a little bit in there and I'm going to mop that, soften it down, clean and dry my mop brush. Then I'll move up here to this. I still need to do our little uh, wire or our holder parts that are on these bells. So a little bit up there. I'm going to do some lightness in the center of this one. That big circle like we did up there. Keeping that wet edge out there and softening that color. That's how we do that. A little bit around this. Not, not a lot. This side could have a little bit more. And then let's do a little reflective highlight on here. All these things will get brightened. Okay. Alright, so that was our first initial highlights. Okay. White, white, white and shoreline, neon's fiery red, and a citron green. Okay. So now we, we're going to let that highlight dry, come back and repeat our second highlight. And our second highlight on all of them will be just white. Okay, let's come back with just white now. I'm still using a pretty thin layer. We're going to keep this, you know, a little bit smaller than our first highlight. And just use it in a few places. No need to get big and dramatic. Okay, this one will definitely show up on here a little bit more because we haven't done white on this one. Get all the way to that edge out there. Some right in here in this bullseye area. Right here. Need a little water. Paint's a little dry there. I'm using a half inch angle brush here. Uh, for these smaller areas, you could certainly go down to a much smaller angle brush so you don't have to worry about your floats being quite so wide. Your reflective highlight can stay pretty thin. It doesn't have to be very thick or very bright, okay? Because it's kind of on the shadow side, so we don't need it standing out and looking bright and bold. So a little bit there, a little bit here. Let's smooth that out a little bit. 
a little bit here. If you get anything in your background, then just clean it up with your background color. I'm going to put a little bit up in here, maybe just a streak of some down through there. This is going to stay pretty light through there because we've only done it one time. All right, let's go to our green one and white out here. A little bit up here. in this bullseye area. You could do a second layer of um, green and mix some white to it and that way you can bring the white in it a little bit more slowly. A little bit here and here. I'm really up on the tippy toe of that brush there. And then our little reflective highlight. Picked up some water, removed the paint. Because that was pretty, um, pretty far over. All right, let's do our gray one. Our silver, I guess this one is. A little bit here. This one doesn't really have much space for a reflective highlight, but, you know, you can... You can add one down here or on this other side, you know, if you so desire. Okay, um, I'm going to quickly do the little hooks that are uh, just on a couple of, of these ornaments, or ornaments, bells. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put some black, soft black out, because that's the color I want to darken with. Darken with burnt umber for my green, um, but I'll just use the soft black because um, it's such a small area, I don't need to worry too much about that. So I'm just going to put these colors out real quick and then because there's not much to these, so we just got to get a little bit of shading on here and a little bit of highlight. We don't have to really you know, worry about doing it two or three times just as long as we can see a little bit of shading. I need to go to green now. And a little bit of highlight, we should be good. Because they're not our focal point at all. This is really fine. Let me zoom in on that. This is really fine shading. Okay? It's just a little bit next to the ornament and a little bit on this side and a little bit underneath that ribbon. We'll be separating that ribbon when we paint it. And then up here I did the same thing, a little bit next to the ornament on this edge and next to the ribbon. So now we're just going to highlight both of them with just white. We don't have to worry about doing all the highlighting layers that we did on everything else. We're just going to put a little white on this edge and a little white on this edge and this is going to finish up our bells okay okay it's a little hard to see that edge because it's against white there but we're going to shade right there that's with a quarter inch angle and we will be needing it to shade these small ribbon areas here and here and then up in here we'll be having a small area, so we will be needing to shade in those areas. So that finishes out our bells. Oh, no, it doesn't. We got to go down here, soft black, and repaint in our dark areas for our bells. So don't forget to do that. This is just soft black. We're just giving them their quick second coat now. We needed to wait till we got all of our shading and everything done so that we weren't going back and painting these multiple times.
Okay, let's see. This one had some X's on it, but I'm not sure we're even going to see those. So, up to you whether you add them back in or not. Okay, I'm not going into a lot of details with the bottom of the bells there. I mean, there's it, several things that you could do to um, enhance those, but I think they're looking pretty good just like that. So the bells are done now. We're going to move on to the ribbon. Okay, are you ready to do the ribbon? I'm ready. Okay, the first thing I want to do is grab a detail liner because we are going to put uh, some stripes, some other stripes on our um, peppermint, uh, peppermint bow. So I'm going to start with my white. I want to thin it down a little bit with some water. Um, any of your paints that are kind of thick, thin them down, get a nice flowy consistency. I'm using a long, an extra long. 10-0 micron liner. Uh, use whatever is your favorite liner and I want to put a stripe in the center of my red areas. So we'll just see a little bit of okay, that big fat stripe. Oops, I didn't quite get that one the right angle. This should not be straight. It needs to be curved. So I'm just going to remove that. I'm going to try and thin this one just a little bit. Okay, this one should curve. thinning your white to always use clean water. You can add green stripes onto your peppermint. We're going to add some more thin red lines here in a minute. And then we'll do all our shading and highlighting. I won't see a stripe in that one because that's kind of folded behind. Make sure you, you sh do the same, follow it the same way that you painted your first area in here. We probably won't see any on that one. thin some red and make some other stripes on here. Almost done with this one. It's not a long project. Uh, we're painting big areas so that takes the longest amount of time. I want to make sure I have all the paint off of my ferrule here. Or the water, not the paint. <laughs> okay, I'm going to come in here and put one on each side of my red areas like this you could put them together in the center if you wanted your they're your stripes you you can make them as creative as you want them to be stripes on each side. That 
would be fun. I don't know, I might come back and do a second stripe. Who knows? I think. <laughs> do I want a second stripe in here? Because that's going to really kind of push some of them together. I don't know. Let me get the first stripe done and see. See how I feel about the whole thing. Nice flowy consistency to your paint. So fun. I love painting peppermint. That one's a little straight. Could have had a little more curve to it. This one here, it's um, it's kind of in that bend where it lays over the other one. But we want to get our details in because even when we come back and shade, it will it will push it where it needs to be. Okay, I don't want to forget this one here. All right, so this is where I need to decide if I want to add a second stripe um, in between, you know, in here, beside this one. Um, it's going to really push those close together there. Um, so I'm thinking I might just leave it like this and not add a second stripe. I think a second stripe would, would look cute. But I don't. I don't want to get it too, uh, too much in there. Okay, so now we're ready to start shading on our ribbon. All right, so now we're going to start shading to separate and define um, like loops and knots and folds. So I've got my antique maroon. It's a little dark, so I'm going to equally mix some of my primary red with it. That's just going to darken my base color of red. And I want to work that into a transparent color into my brush. I've moved down to a 3 8 inch angle brush. Okay, we're going to go inside our knot here. Walk that down just a little bit. We'll be darkening all this. This is our first shading equal mix. Kind of a start out with a, a sheer color because we will come back and darken. We don't want to get it too incredibly dark to begin with. here. Okay, we're starting to define shape here. We're going to go along the outside edge out here. Although that's really our highlight edge, so we could make that not our shaded side. I might come back and try and highlight that. Um, out here on this outer edge out here, I definitely want to do some shading. this bell here. Remember that's a little a little highlight on the bell that I put on there. So that area is going to be fairly dark. Okay. Now you can go down to a quarter inch angle brush. And 
this is underneath this edge. So we're going to give that a little bit of shading in there. This one gets shaded next to our ornament here and next to this ornament. Oops, keep it off your, your yellow ball. Don't do like I just did there. Clean up your red if you get it where you don't want it right away. Because red is a little bit harder to um, clean up. You know, it's, a, it's more of a staining color. Okay, so we've got a fold here. Now you can have yours folding whichever direction you want it to fold. Mine's going to fold like this. And then down here, let's see how I do that. Pull. Okay, I put that, I was going to have it go this direction. Um, but I put that red line on the wrong place, so we'll go here and have it fold that way. Let's get our folds on this one. This one is also folding this way. Which is kind of hard to see until we get a little bit more stuff going on here. We'll go ahead and shade out here. A bit more of that burgundy color. Okay, I want to do the outer edges as well, but I want to grab my small angle and do inside here. Keep that float soft and right there on that edge of that brush, that little toe of that brush. Don't let it get over too far so we can keep this a nice small float. Let's do some edges. I'm going to go back to my 3 8 inch. That's how we do 3 8 And we're going to get our mix again. I don't want this to get very far over on my brush. And a little bit more of that maroon. going to, let's see, I'm going to go down along here, that's a highlight edge, so, well, I actually want to put the highlight down the center, right now I'm just trying to give it a rounded, more folded look. Keeping this very sheer, not using a lot of paint, getting water so I can thin my paint. That probably should have been more like a highlight side, but. This is a very sheer color, you guys. Very, very light. Let's do some on our knot here. I need to put some fresh paint out or something. Thing seems to be all dry.
Okay, we're starting to get a little bit of peppermint look on here now, so it's starting to look pretty good. I do want my outside edges to, to um, have a little bit of color on them because I just think it gives it a more rounded shape. So that's pretty good for our first shading on here. We're going to come in and add some darker values in here and then go with our highlight. So this is looking so good, you guys. All right, we're going to deepen our shading here. Um, we're going to do two maroons this time and one red. Let me mix that together. I got my half inch back out because inside here I need it to be bigger. Here. I just want to cre create my darkest areas here. I'm just going to stick with this larger brush, but um, if you're not feeling comfortable with a larger brush, then you just go ahead and go back down to that 3 8 inch. This is still a sheer color here. We're just applying a second sheer layer is all we're doing. some water into the paint mix here. I always touch my paper towel so I can get the excess paint and moisture out of my brush. It's almost like a um, dry brush kind of float here. because I don't have a whole lot of, of anything in my brush. All right, let's come up here and work this knot. A little bit more antique maroon so I can go into this dark area here. sure I've got all of my areas here for my second shading so I can I still want this area right here to be a little bit darker. Alright, we're 
looking pretty good here. Let me come and do this edge. Goes off the canvas here. And we'll also do down here. Okay, that was a lot of paint. Get a little moisture in my brush here. Okay. Thin that baby down. Okay, I'm just picking up, right now I'm just picking up antique maroon so I can tuck some in to these really dark, dark areas. That would be the little triangle shapes. If you've painted with me before, you know what I'm talking about. Going to be little triangle shapes that are going to be in the valleys, deepest areas, and they're going to be um, your darkest color. You know, so you don't need it everywhere. It's just, it's just in those dark, dark areas. So up in here, I definitely need more of the antique maroon that is drier than dirt there. Highlights are what is going to make this baby pop off of this canvas, okay? So let me do a little darker shading on this one right here. I'm just going to use my antique maroon. Very small amount of paint staying up on the tip. Be tiptoe. I want that to look like it's kind of wrapped around that little piece right there. You know, if you want to eliminate those all together, you can. But I, I think it adds extra to the painting. Um, so we're going to do our highlighting on here uh, right now. All right, are we ready to make this peppermint pop, pop, pop? Let's grab some fresh white out. And I'm going to grab a round brush. Just a small round. A two round should be fine. And take some of my white paint. First, I want to touch up here on this edge where I got a little bit of red on my yellow. Okay, everything else looks good. So these turned edges here, I'm going to try and get the moisture out of my brush. I just want straight paint here. We're going to add a little highlight on these turned edges. Kind of like that. And that will fade in there, and you can come and do it again, so don't feel like you Okay. I will probably definitely do that again. I'm just going to start right here on this one, and I'm going to highlight in the center. You may have to thin your paint down a little bit. I try to start in the white area and maybe end in the white area. Uh, that just gives it a little bit more of a pretty flow, I think. So since I'm painting these like peppermint, I'm highlighting them like I would normally peppermint. Um, otherwise, you can highlight them like you do any other ribbon 
Um, I'm going to put a highlight going through here. Put a highlight here. I'm not sure that edge will get much highlight. We got a highlight the edge. Oh, okay, that was a ton of paint there. The edge out here. And you can put a little bit inside here. Edge. A little bit of highlight through here. We won't really see much here, but we'll put a little, little in there. I'm going to come back and do my little folded areas. Make sure they're nice and bright. Incredibly wide. I don't want it to be that wide. Okay, that looks better. And then any of your highlights that you want to go back over, you can certainly do that to make them really pop. I try to go through the centers of the highlight that I put on there. On these areas we'll just have to do most all of it again. Center part. Do two stripes down the center. I tend to do just one. Okay. All right, I think on this edge, I'm going to go ahead and float that highlight. Use my 3 8 inch angle. on here. Kind of smooth that out a little bit. Oh, and I got to do some on this edge. This edge needs a highlight. I'm darken right there with a little bit of shading. Okay, that's going to help that look a little bit more like ribbon. Let's see, there was a place I needed to darken. Right here. Let's see, that knot goes there, I think. Sorry for that noise, if you can hear it. I'm not sure what my husband's doing, but it's very loud in here. All right, check your shadings. Make sure they don't need any additional tucking in of some color. Check your highlights. Make sure they are good. I'm going to go back over. One. And this one, a little bit more paint. And I think we're gonna, well, I don't know if I'm gonna call this one done or not because I really am thinking about putting some bling 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 on the ribbon. That's just kind of what I like to do with my Christmas ones. I don't like to leave them. 
plain. The bells look amazing. So let's make that ribbon look a little bit more amazing. Okay, I have put a quick, uh, I've put a quick <laughs> little bit of varnish on mine. Goodness, I can't even spit my words out. Okay, so you want to use, I like to use, let me just say it this way, I like to use a flat or a matte varnish, okay? Especially if I'm going to have bling on my piece. The only thing I want shiny is the blingy parts. And I'm getting ready to add some bling stuff to this. So this is discontinued from Decor, but uh, this is what I use, the soft touch varnish, because it is a very flat varnish. Uh, my other varnish I have used all up, so I've got to get some more. Now, there's two things that you can do. You can wash some Extreme Sheen onto your gold and your silver bells. I think I'll do that. And you can add some glitter on here as well. And I think we will probably do that as well. Okay, your options here for metallic is Extreme Sheen or the Deco Art Metallics. I am going to use the Extreme Sheen. You just need a little drop of this stuff because we're just making a wash, you know, just to give it a little bit of shine. Okay, just a little dot. A little dot will do. Okay, I'm just going to thin this with some water and make a little wash of it. This is very, very sheer, you guys. This is. I'm going to use clean water so I don't change the color of it. Oh, if you could just see how sparkly gold this is, I'm telling you. All right, I'm going to put this on here and a very thin layer of it. Which will give our bell some metallic sparkle. I want to keep it a thin layer because I don't want to take away from my highlights. I don't want to take away from anything, my shading or anything. So keeping this a very, 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 very sheer wash still get you that sparkle, that metallic sparkle. And keep all those highlights and everything on the painting. Hold it up so I can see the reflection where I haven't painted. I don't know how much shine you're getting there. I can come back and do a second layer if I need to, but I am a big believer in starting out light. Starting out sheer. And then coming back and brightening. If you have metallic colors in all of these colors, oh, that'd be so pretty. If you have a blue that you like, um, or a green or red, you know, you can get your metallic colors in all the flavors. Okay. All right, we're going to let those uh, dry, and I may come back and repeat them. I'm going to set this particular one aside just for a second. I am going to um, mix... I'm going to mix some uh, Glamour Dust up. Now, I generally use the Glamour Dust in the bottles. I love, love, love this stuff. But um, I'm going to show you how to make your own. I've got my high gloss varnish. So I'm going to put some of that out. You don't need a lot. And then I've got my Glamour Dust just fine... Um, glitter here. It's just a powdered glitter. And I'm going to put quite a little bit in there because I want mine to sparkle like you've never seen anything sparkle before. Sparkle like diamonds. I might have to add a little bit more varnish to make my pile a little bit bigger. I know I'm going to have more than enough here to do a couple of coats. No, maybe not. Let's put a little bit more varnish in there. waste any of that beautiful glitter. Oh my gosh, you guys. So pretty. So pretty. 
Oh, so pretty. All right. I am just going to grab a flat brush. Make sure this one's clean. Look like it had a little bit of red paint in it. And then we're just going to get to painting here. And just paint everything in with... Or I'm just painting the ribbon. The ribbon is what I want to have blingy bling bling on it. The sparkly bling. Love this project. Oh my gosh. I've had this one kind of sitting to the side to do for a while. With moving and everything, you know. I'm lucky I found anything that I wanted to do. I'm going to have to do my metallic again. It's not quite as shiny as what I would like it to be. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, you guys, it's killing me. It's so pretty. I might have to do a smaller brush in that area. I don't want to get it where I don't want it. Okay, that was a brush full now. I'll go back with a smaller brush to get in some of those smaller areas. I like that curve there. I just didn't feel comfortable using this big brush loaded down with this varnish. Glittery varnish. I love the Glamour Dust Ice Crystal, but I really like making my varnish, my ice crystal stuff like this because I can put as much Varnish or glitter in there as I want. Now I could add more glitter to my ice crystal as well. You know, just take that fine powdered glitter and mix some in on my palette. I say there's never enough glitter. Never enough. Okay. That was a lot. Just going back in to get these areas that were a little bit tight. And then don't forget this area down here. Oh, so pretty. So, so pretty. My silver bell's got a little bit more shine on it than my um, gold one, so I'm going to do another wash on my gold one, but I'm going to dry it real quick. Now you can do as many layers as you want on your ribbon. I say at least two is what I recommend, but uh, just to make sure you get every place covered. But that's totally up to you. So let me come back in with my palette here and do a wash of gold again. More water. If you find that you do put a wash on here and you've lost some of your highlight, you can go back and put it on top, but just be aware that um, it will be flat um, because um, you know the the acrylics out of the out of the bottle are a flat paint. So if you if you do have to go back in and paint a highlight or touch up something. It will be flat. Hold it up in the light so you can see where you may have missed getting paint. So I can see I didn't go around this area very good. Okay. All right. 
Let me rinse this brush. And then we'll do a little bit more on our silver too, I think. back here it's take took a little bit of our shadow away but not too much not too much plus when you do it like this in the light you can see where you may have missed getting some glitter on there and um, you can go back and do that I'm gonna quickly dry this because I don't want to stick my hand in it while I'm trying to show it to you uh, I am going to go back and put another coat of varnish, uh, uh, glamour dust on there, but I'm going to do that off camera uh, so we can just call this project pretty done, I think. Pretty done. I am loving, loving, loving this, you guys. So cute for Christmas. Again, make those bells any color that you want that goes with your decor, but now you know how to do all of the colors. If you're doing a whole blue one instead of just, you know, little pieces like that, I, it, it will look much better. Um, it, it's harder when you're doing so many areas that you have to shade and, and blend it together. So, But I think it looks pretty darn good. I am so happy with it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed. Um, and if you have enjoyed this at all, please give me a thumbs up. Please comment and please share. I appreciate you guys so much. I can't wait to see you on the next one. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.